So I'm sitting in that chair, and all of a sudden, it just hit me. Heartbeat. <laughs> Fucking, my heart feels like it's about a pound on my chest. My pain's in my chest. My throat tightens up. <laughs> can't fucking breathe. Tunnel vision. I can't think straight. I couldn't, like, I was like, what's going on? I don't know what's going on. Yo, what's good? It's your boy, Real Eric Alvarez. And I want you guys to understand this one thing, all right? If you master this one ability, your life will forever be 10 times better. You'll be able to attract better quality women. You'll be able to attract better quality friends. And you'll be able to live a happier and more fulfilling life. Now, what is this one trait that's so special that can do so many things for me? It is the ability to, it is mastering the ability to be alone. The problem with most people nowadays is that they feel like they have to always be with somebody else. I need a girlfriend to be happy. I need a bunch of friends to be happy. I need to, you know, I can't be alone. Because if I'm alone, that's scary. I'm solo, you know, like losers hang out by themselves. I don't want to go out to eat by myself. Now, that's for the, the nerd in school who goes sit at the lunch table by himself. Well, let me tell you this. The second that I started spending time more alone with myself, I discovered a few things about myself. Number one, I was able to discover and get closer to my purpose in my life of what I feel that I am truly here to do. Number two, I got in touch with who I really am, not by being influenced by my friends, because the people you hang out with, show me your five closest friends, I'll show you your future. So the people you're always hanging out with are constantly influencing your thoughts and the way you feel and therefore who you are being who you are acting as but your true self is always there deep down and you will never find your true self unless you take time to yourself alone especially if you are in the same environment that will continue because as humans we're very easily influenced by everything the city you live in the, sh the people you follow on social media, the TV shows you watch, the books you read, the friends you hang out with, your parents, your family members. All, everything has an influence on you. No one is above that. Everybody is influenced. And as humans, we're influenced pretty easily. Okay? So if you go out in nature by yourself, it doesn't have to be for like a week or even a day. It can be for 30 minutes to an hour. Once a week maybe. Do that, and you will total you you will change. You will be stunned by what you discover because you have never taken the time to just look deep down and be like, who am I? Who is Eric? Who is John? Who is Marcus? Who is Ryan? Who is Max? Ask yourself these questions. Who am I? Why am I here? What is the purpose of me even being on this earth? Because every day is a blessing. Fucking Kobe Bryant just passed away. Like, Kobe Bryant, of all people, if he can go, any of us can go. And our life can, like that. I'll share a story with you. In 2017, when I was dealing with severe anxiety and severe depression, I had hormonal imbalances. I had two occasions where I thought I was literally, a, I, I accepted the fact that I may die right now. I was sitting in my room college dorm and I remember I was in this I had like a my my uh I was in my room right I had my my bed right here in the left like in the corner of the room then on the other corner to the next to it I had like a like a desk with like a big chair kind of like similar to that chair right there but it's like leather so I'm sitting in that chair and all of a sudden it just hit me heartbeat <laughs> fucking my heart feel like about a pound on my chest my pain's in my chest my throat tightens up <laughs> can't fucking breathe Tunnel vision. I can't think straight. I couldn't like, I was like, what's going on? I don't know what's going on. And I literally thought I was having a heart attack. And in that moment, I was like, damn, I might go right now. And you know what? It is what it is. You know, I accept it. And I just sat there and I had to just sit down. I just meditated, closed my eyes.
and just breathe. After about 10, 15 minutes, final sensations passed. And that happened to me one, more, one other time where those really were panic attacks or anxiety attacks. I'd never experienced that before. And if you never experienced a true, a real anxiety attack, if you ever experienced it, you know you it feels exactly like a heart attack. I my my, my arms my like arms were getting numb like it it's exactly what a heart attack would feel like if if you if I had to imagine that right because I'd obviously never experienced a heart attack thank God, but it's a very scary experience and a very humbling experience and it made me realize holy shit, life is not guaranteed life is not promised, any moment we could just go. Any time. That could be it. You could be walking down the street and some ass, some drunk driver comes, boom, hits you, you're done. You know? You could be thinking you're perfectly healthy and then out of nowhere something happens, like a massive heart attack. We don't know these things. We're not promised anything. So it's so important that we maximize every single moment of our lives. And if we don't truly know who we are, we have that time by ourselves, the ability to master being alone. We never get in touch with who we truly are and our true potential of what we're able to do. And if we're not in touch with our true potential and who we truly are and what we feel that we are meant here to do, you won't have that drive, that purpose to go out and do the things that are tough. Because I'm telling you, bro, going after it, getting, going against the grain, being one of the rebellious few amongst the complacent many, being on Team Fitness, being a fitnesser, going after our goals, doing the hard shit, that is not going to be an easy road and it not be a short road either. It's going to be a long road, a lot of twists and turns. You have moments where you feel like giving up. You have moments where you're going to feel like you're not good enough. You may even have moments where you cry. I had many moments where I just been pushing, pushing, pushing. I felt like I was going nowhere. I just, I was, I was just frustrated. I would cry a little bit. Like you, like you don't get it. Like if you're really going after your shit and you're putting. 120 fucking percent and you sacrifice so fucking much and you still feel like you haven't got what you deserve and one day you're just like it all hits you at once you're like dude i don't know what the fuck to do anymore like i don't even know if what i'm doing is the right thing like you start rethinking and questioning your whole entire life and that is a very scary moment and it's okay for that to happen it's okay it's, like dude if you think you're a pussy for crying if you think <clears throat> men should not cry Grow the fuck up, all right? Grow the fuck up. That is not true. Don't be an emotional little bitch over it. But if you got to cry, let out the fucking emotion. You're a human being. Because if you don't, you're going to store that shit in you. And what's going to happen? It's going to fester and fester and fester. And what happens when you push a balloon underwater? Then you let go of the balloon. What, what, what happens? The balloon shoots up, right back up, right to the surface. And you know what happens most of the time? The further you push that balloon down, the higher out of the water it comes. So the more shit you try to push down and hold and not let go and not release, the worse the opposite reaction is going to be. The worse the, that moment where the balloon comes out of the water, the higher it's going to come and the worse that's just going to happen. So if you got shit you got you to gotta let go of, fucking let it out. If you had an emotion, let that shit out. But do not be emotional. There's a difference. Humans are emotional creatures. We deal with emotions. As a man, you deal with emotions. You have emotions, but we are rational as well. So it is okay to let out the emotions, but you must analyze and act and handle it in a rational manner. You don't sit there, oh my God, I don't know what to do. My life's over. I'm going to sit and cry here. Feel sorry. Fuck that. Let it out. Have your moment of just letting it out, releasing, and like, all right. Now what do I need to do to fix this? I don't have the answer yet, but I will figure it out and I will do what needs to be done. When I dealt with hormonal imbalances, I could have easily took the easy route. Remember when I was going through anxiety and depression, I could have easily gotten Xanax. I could have easily started taking all these drugs. I smoked weed back then, but that wasn't because of that. I, I smoked weed before and I even smoked weed after. So it, wasn't, it had nothing to do with it as much. But I could have easily gotten Xanax and these anxiety pills and all this shit and, and Zoloft and antidepressants. But I was like, you know what? Fuck that. I know it won't help. I'm better than that. I don't know how. I'm going to figure out a way. And when I dealt with hormonal imbalances, I had low testosterone, high estrogen. I could have easily gotten some hormone replacement therapy or done these traditional methods that doctors would give you. But I knew I'm only 20 fucking one years old at the time. I'm, not, I'm 23 now. I'm not going to fucking be dependent on hormone shit my whole life. Fuck that. I know there's a way. I don't know how, 
I have no fucking clue how, but I know there is a way to do it naturally, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to figure it out. And that's exactly what I fucking did. And guess what? Got my hormones tested. Fucking high testosterone now. All right, and I'm I'm damn proud of that shit because that was the hardest shit I've had to go through in my life. You have no idea what the fuck it feels like to live a full year of your life in chronic depression, chronic anxiety, low testosterone at 20 to 21 years old, where it should be your peak. I couldn't even think straight. If you were talking to me have a conversation, I would be so out of it. I had something I think it was called derealization. Where I literally lived, I lived like this for a fucking year, and nothing I could do in any moment could stop that. Because it was my hormones. I literally felt like I was outside of my body. Like I was not me. You ever felt like you're like you ever felt like you're just like really out of it? Like just really, really, you don't know what's going on. All this brain fog, you can't think straight. You're just like really out of it. Imagine living like that for a fucking year. It's fucking hell. And I made it through that shit. All fucking natural. And that's why I talk with passion about this shit. Because I lived it. And I wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't go through this period of time being alone. And you know what? That was the worst shit that ever happened to me, but also the biggest blessing of my life. That was the best thing that ever fucking happened to me. I would not trade it for the work because it taught me so much. And it was during that time where I started to detach from all my friends and I got alone. And I was alone for a long time because no one's going to be there to help me. No one's going to do it for me. No one's coming. Oh, dude, are you okay? Is something going on with you, bro? You, you haven't been around. What's going on? Like you're, acting, like, you're not acting like yourself. What's wrong with you? No one, no one did that shit. And it showed me who's real, who's fake. There's a lot of fake motherfuckers out there. And I, and I detached from those people. And now, my circle is very small. Very small. I don't hang out with that many people, but you know what? People I hang out with and people that you should be hanging out with are people that elevate you, that rise you, and help you bring out your best self. Fuck being the dude with 100 friends. Be the person with two or three friends who are a ride or fucking dies and are truly there for them. That is what I care about. Quality over quantity. That is what is important. All right? So if you don't have the ability to be by yourself and get alone, you'll never experience these things. You'll never know your full potential, what you're actually capable because you're capable of so much more than you think. And sometimes life's going to throw a shitstorm in your face, kick you in the fucking dirt, and stomp on your face till you're bleeding, your jaw's broken, and say, you know what? What you got now, motherfucker? You talk all this shit, but let's see what you got. It's going to test you. And you can either fold and be a little bitch, don't be, or don't be a little bitch and fucking dominate like a champion. And get back up and learn and grow and become better. Because don't ask for an easier life. Ask to be stronger, more capable, smarter, more rational, more determined, more purpose-driven. And that will lead you a much happier and much more fulfilling life because life is like the yin and the yang the good and the bad you can't have good without bad you can't have great times without bad times you will have periods of your time where shit is going amazing it is going great and you have periods of time where life is fucking hell i wouldn't say i was suicidal during that time but i was very fucking close i was very close and i knew that i could not live that way any longer and at that period if i would have kept on living like that who knows what would have happened? Straight up. It's the fucking truth, all right? So, you need to understand. As the book Think and Grow Rich says, Napoleon Hill, the most popular success book of all time, he says that for every seed of a negative is an equal and equivalent seed of a positive. I mean, not equal or equal, an equal or greater seed of a bigger positive, a bigger success. And he, let's be, let's be very, let's, let's understand what that means. For every seed of a negative, for every potential of a negative that could turn into a big negative, there's also the seed of an equal or greater positive, equal or greater success. Now, you determine whether that seed is going to grow. You must water that seed to become successful. If not, what happens to a seed if you leave it in the dirt and never give it water? Nothing. So if you do nothing, that seed will never come to fruition. So you must put in the action, put in the work, and do the shit that is hard. All right? 
Hopefully this video resonated with some of y'all. Hopefully it touched some of you as much as it touched me because I lived through this shit. And I get damn passionate talking about because it it's fucking real. This shit just comes from the heart. I don't script this shit. I don't plan in advance. In fact, I turned the camera on. I was like, what am I, what do you want to do talk about? Being alone. Supported. Boom. Right into it. Off the fucking dome. I said, I got shit to say. And I got motherfuckers who need to hear it. And if you're watching this video and you're still watching this video, you needed to hear this. And hopefully, me going through all the bullshit I had to go through during that period of my life is able to change your life right now. And if it is, it made it all worth it. Because I knew I did not go that, through that shit for no reason. I knew I went through it for a reason and to help and inspire others. That's exactly what I'm going to fucking do. And that's exactly what I am doing. All right? So, with that being said, bro, take time to yourself. You must master the ability to be alone. Go eat by yourself. Go see a movie by yourself. Go spend a day by yourself. I live here in Colombia by myself. I got no family out here. When I came here, I didn't have any friends out here. Solo. And you know what? I've created a pretty awesome life that I am very happy and I really enjoy. And I met some awesome people along the, along the way and along this ride, all right? So you would be very surprised at things that will happen, like things that will come up, the people you will meet, the experience, the opportunities that would just come out of nowhere. When you just follow your heart, your intuition, you just fucking go for it. Don't follow the lot. For, so when, when it comes to following your purpose, your heart will always know more than your brain. So it is important to be rational, but it's also important to be a little irrational as well. When I dropped out of college and said, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to create my own life, I didn't have a fucking business already set up. I didn't have a, like a plan. I just, I, I just had, it, was a, it was an intuition. It was a knowing. I was driving home from school, spring break, and I was debating the idea because I, I knew college wasn't making sense for me. I was studying entrepreneurship anyway, so I was already had the mindset of being an entrepreneur. I knew, I knew what I was going to do. I was never going to work for somebody else. I always wanted to create my own business. I knew that from day one. I've been very blessed. I have parents who are entrepreneurs. Dad owns his own, own business. My mom's a real estate agent. Entrepreneurial job. So from day one, even when I was like five years old, it's like, oh, what do you want to do when you're older? I want to own my own business. I don't want to be fucking work for somebody else. What? No. I either want to be a basketball player or I wanted to own my own business. One of the two. And you know what? I'm too fucking short. I don't have the genetics for basketball. I was decent. But also, I, I, I lost that passion for it. And you know what I'm going for now? Own my own business, create my own life. All right. So, when I just followed my gut, followed my heart, things just started to fall in place. I, you, I couldn't predict it. I couldn't explain it. It just like, things were just like meant to happen and, it, and the stars aligned and then opportunities started to come. And I, because I took the leap of faith and I have no problem taking a risk and betting on myself the same way you will have no problem betting on yourself and taking risks when you believe in yourself and you get time alone and you realize your true potential. That's when shit will change. That's when opportunities will come. And that's when your life is going to get a hell of a lot better and things start to get really fun. All right. But I had to go through the shitstorm first of the 2017 time to get to that level to be able to trust my gut, to trust my intuition, and to have the time on myself to dis discover my true potential and what I know I'm actually capable of. And then that's when things started to change. That's when things started to happen. All right. So, with that being said, bro, I love you, dog. Fucking get time alone. Follow your heart. Find your purpose. Do what you got to do. Do the hard work. And if you're going through a hard time right now, I get it. I've been there. Like I said, it's always the seed of a greater, of an equivalent or a greater success. It's on you now to water that seed and to nurture that seed. And if you're going through a hard time right now, there's still something that life is trying to teach you. You have not learned the lesson yet. So don't wish for an easier life. Wish to be stronger. All right, man. Love you, bro. I'm out. Don't forget to like my shit. Comment, subscribe. This is a very important message. I want you to share it with one person that you think this will touch. That's all I ask. With that being said, bro, I'm out. Peace.